Welcome, everyone, and Merry Christmas. It's been more than three months since the last review, and that video was a review of an awful game. However Mission in Snowdrift Land is a great game. There was another Mission in Snowdrift Land, or as it's called, a Pixo in Action, Mission in Snowdrift Land made in 2006 to advertise Nintendo products, and it was like an advent calendar, every day a new level opened from December 1st to the 24th, and it was promptly taken a fly on January 16th, 2007. It was made on Flash which a doobie killed last year, but the game is archived in Blue Maxima's Flashpoint, 15 years later. Tons of bits decided to revive Mission in Snow Drift Land, and revive it they did. They made a Kickstarter campaign which was wildly successful, and the game was released on Steam on December 1, 2021. The game runs on the Unity engine, and I think it clearly looks like it is. I myself like Unreal better, but whatever. In this game you don't have to wait 24 days to play all the levels. You can either play one level a day or all of them, as you see fit. I 100%ed the game 2 hours after it released, so you could probably guess which option I chose, and how long it took to beat. You'd imagine the first world would be the easiest one, but you'd be wrong. The first world is in fact the hardest one. Mostly because of those damn skeleton fish which slow you down almost to a dead stop, which means you fall into the water and die. The level design, while generally fine. Sometimes feels like the designer didn't care much, and put lots of enemies in a small space. If the Discord overlay is active, and you try to record the game, you'll experience severe FPS drops. At least I did, I'd advise you to turn off the overlay. The game's got some nice pixel art. To me, pixel art, if done right, cannot be compared to anything else, it can be so beautiful. Mission in Snow Drift Land definitely sits on the better part of that scale. It also has nicely designed enemies. Imagine running around as a snowman jumping on the heads of penguins, rainbow worms, and encountering fire bees and golden scorpions in a volcano. You don't have to imagine, just play the game. The platforming is pretty good, as it should be. I wish there was a run button though, and you wouldn't have to walk for a while for Chubby to start running. For achievement hunters, this game is a must have. As I mentioned earlier, I got all the achievements in 2 hours, so this game will boost your achievement count by quite some. And I can't overlook the fact that tons of bits revived a 15 year old IP. I mean, how often does that happen? Tell me one other studio that did this recently, or even at all. That's what I thought. You gotta appreciate that they actually revived a 15 year old IP, especially since it wasn't a hugely popular one. Also they said on Discord, that additional content is coming. This game was practically made to be speed ran. There's also an in-game speed run timer, which just strengthens this. A few people already ran the game, including me. Shameless self-promotion, I got a speed running channel, with 4 speed runs. I plan on making some more runs of mission in snow drift land and finally run ghost runner. I don't have much more to say about speed running this game, so on to the next topic. Is it worth the price? Maybe. I would say yes. It's a short, but sweet platformer with great speedrun potential. But on the other hand you could argue that it's a slightly questionably designed very short game. Both are correct, you decide which one is more correct to you. For me it was worth the price, for you it might not be. I hope you found this review helpful. I kinda hope someone from tons of bits has seen this video too. Anyway, like and subscribe if you want, and have a Merry Christmas. Goodbye, everyone.